So we have a two. We will have two over here, and we'll have two over here because we've multiplied the entire equation. So two Na plus plus two electrons gives two Na, which is sodium. Now the reason I multiplied the sodium equation by two was because we had two electrons in the chlorine equation. So let's have two electrons in the sodium equation because now th this way it looks more professional. Now these are called half equations, and this is how you write half equations. So now uh, let's just erase the twos. Let's just uh, ignore the twos for now because now you know how to write half equations. Uh, I'm not being able to erase this one, so I'll just yeah. So now we know that these are our two half equations. And what if I want to measure the amount of sodium that has been deposited here on the cathode, or the amount of chlorine that has been bubbled off at the anode? So I want to know that in a specific amount of time. So for the measure, measurement of time, I will use a stopwatch, and for the measurement of current, I am already using an ammeter. So then I calculate the charge Q that has passed overall, and Q is equal to I T. This is an equation. Q is equal to I T, where Q is the total charge that has passed. I is the current, the current you are getting from the ammeter, and T is the time, the time you have noted on the stopwatch. So the total charge passed is Q. The unit of Q is coulombs, coulombs, uh, and the symbol is C, ca capital C. And current, the unit is amperes, the symbol is capital A, and time, it's obviously second, the, the SI unit is seconds, and the symbol is small s because I'm not writing seconds, you already know. So Q is equal to IT. You need to remember this expression. Now, there is something called the Faraday's constant. Faraday's constant. So Michael Faraday, the scientist whose constant this is, Faraday's constant. It is the charge on one mole of, an el of electrons. It is the charge on one mole of electrons. And it has a value of 96,500 coulombs. 96,500 coulombs. So this is the charge on one mole of an electron, which is our Gadro number of electrons. So uh, we can also write F is equal to L E, where E is the electronic charge. It is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. So sorry, the Faraday's constant, the unit is coulomb per mole. Not just coulomb, but coulomb per mole. And uh, this, is the, this is the charge on an electron, 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 19 coulombs. The Faraday's constant is 96,500 coulombs per mole. And this is the Avogadro constant, which is 6.02 3 into 10 to the power of 23 units per mole. So you can see that per mole multiplies with coulomb to give coulomb per mole. So uh, coulomb per mole. So the, you can see this is the for, this is one formula. You need to remember this one as well. Now when I do F upon Q, so now you can see when I do F upon Q, this is coulomb per mole. This is mole, uh, so this is not the mole, sorry, this is coulomb. So when I do this, the coulomb and coulomb cancel out. So what I get is something in the per mole, read, in the per mole unit. And when I divide this by one, what I get is one by whatever this value is. When I divide this per mole by one, I get the number of mole of electrons because mole to the power of minus one comes up to give me mole. So this is basically Q upon F. So Q over F, Q, which is the charge that has been passed through the circuit, and F is the Faraday constant. When I do Q over F, it gives me N, which is the number of moles of electrons. So now that I have the, I have the number of moles of electrons, I can look at these equations, and I can see the number of moles of sodium or chlorine. So in this case, the number of moles of sodium is also N, because these have a 1 is to 1 ratio. And in this case, if the number of moles of electrons is n, the number of moles of chlorine gas is n over 2 because 
uh, we have a 2 is to 1 ratio for electrons to chlorine respectively.